So when we think of scams, uh, some of the most common things, this is a quick list I found on the internet. When we think of scams, this is the type of stuff we think of. Everything from, uh, how many guys have gotten an email from a Nigerian looking to free up $150 million or so? Only a few of you guys, yeah. There's some really great stories of people who've played the scammers and tried to scam them back that are pretty fun. But if you ask a scientist what a scam is, or name some scams, this is the type of stuff they'll come up with. All of these are things that uh, scientists refer to as pseudoscience or scam sciences, stuff that pretends to be legitimate science but is, in fact, pseudoscience. Who can, who can tell me what? You guys ever heard that term before, pseudoscience? Who can tell me what pseudoscience is? Just raise your hand and, and maybe you'll get a book. There we go, right here. False science, yeah, that's the simplest way to do it. In fact, instead of a book, I'm going to give you a trick deck of cards. Give her a trick deck of cards. That was a very good, very succinct answer. Uh, another answer I found came from Dr. Michael Shermer, the guy who uh, is the editor of Skeptic Magazine. And he, got, he, I love the way this is phrased. Claims presented so that they appear scientific even though they lack supporting evidence and plausibility. Now keep in mind, pseudosciences will always look like science. The guys who present it will always be wearing lab coats, they'll have clipboards, and they'll talk with, very, with a lot of authority about whatever their subject is. But the difference is, in real life, when it comes to science, you, pr you propose a theory, you make a test for that theory, and if that theory, uh, if, if the test fails, boom, that's over. Back to the drawing board, your theory was wrong. Nice try. In pseudoscience, you make up a story and then you tell a lot of, of tales to support your story, and then when you try to test it, if it works, you count it, and if it doesn't work, then you make up some excuses. You say, oh, the vibrations weren't right, and you rewrite the theory over and over and over again so that no matter what, you can't disprove it. And, uh, well, who believes in, in, in uh, uh, pseudoscience? Did, I found some interesting uh, uh, polls here. This is a USA Today poll over the 20 years from 1976 to 1997, some amazingly huge jumps in all, you know, reincarnation, the belief jumps from 9% to 29%. The belief that you could talk to dead people like you're talking over a phone has jumped fourfold. And National Science Foundation did some polls. All of those numbers went up over that 10-year period. Uh, Gallup organization did a poll with 13 different phenomena. Belief in eight went up. Only one, the belief in devil possession, went down. And there were double-digit increases in haunted houses, ghosts, talking with the dead, and witches. Not coincidentally, notice this. These subjects all had blockbuster movies in the 90s and saw a rise. This subject hasn't had a blockbuster movie since the 70s and has gone down. Kind of an interesting correlation there. So we're going to start off talking about these types of things. Astrology, numerology, graphics. You could throw tarot cards in here. I'll give a book to anyone who can tell me what these as a group are called. Raise your hand first to be called on. That way we don't get everyone shouting at once. What are these called as? Take a guess. Right here. Yeah, they are. They are 